Hi, this is pre-algebra lesson 7-3, solve multi-step equations. In this lesson, we'll be able to solve multi-step equations and pairs of equations using more than one approach. Let's start with solve and discuss it. A water tank fills through two pipes. Water flows through one pipe at a rate of 25,000 gallons an hour, which is represented as X over here and through the other pipe at 45,000 gallons an hour. Water leaves the system at a rate of 60,000 gallons an hour. So um, the water tank is filled through two pipes and goes out uh, through one big pipe, okay? So let's look at the problem. There are three of these tanks and each tank holds 1 million gallons. 1 million has how many zeros? Six zeros. Each tank is half full. So right now is only 500,000 gallons. Okay. Water is entering and leaving a tank at the maximum amount. Determine the number of hours it'll, it'll take to fill all three tanks. Okay. So right now, all three tanks are just halfway full. Right? But then they're going through the same um, uh, speed with the two pipes over here and going out the same speed with one pipe. So you can see that the water is going to be filled in at the rate of 25,000 per hour and 45,000 per hour. And it's going to leave every hour 60,000. Okay, and we want to know how long it'll take to fill all three tanks which would be represented as when, what expression represents um, when it's filled fully. The tanks fill at the same rate and from 500,000, Well, first of all, let's um, let's simplify this expression first, okay? So 25,000 plus 45,000 is going to be 70,000. And 70,000, 70,000 X minus 60,000 X is going to be 10,000 X, right? So every hour um, total, it's going to fill up by a speed of 10,000 X. Right? right now you have uh, 500,000 gallons. So we just need to fill another 500,000 gallons. So how long would it be? So we're gonna let that equal to 500,000. Okay, so 10,000 times how many hours? What numbers? What number would be 500,000 is what we're looking for. So we can divide both sides by 10,000, which means you can, wait, uh, no. Uh, you can cancel out four zeros and then you get 50, okay? So after 50 hours, it will, it will uh, fill all three tanks. And you don't need to multiply three or divide by three or whatever, because they're all working at the same time. If it fills this first tank, it also fills the other tanks. So you just need 50 hours, okay? They're working at the same time. It's not like they're working it separately, okay? So let's explain. Because the tanks fill at the same rate and um, x is equal to 50, it will take 50 hours to 
fill all three tanks is our answer. Can you solve the problem in more than one way? Yeah, of course. You can also draw a bar diagram. You can have different expressions. Um, you can use logic. So there are multiple ways to solve this, but you should get the same answer of 50 hours. Let's look at focus on math practices. What are two different ways to simplify the expression? Four times three X plus seven X plus five, so that it equals 40 X minus 20. Let's see. So you can use the distributive property, distributive property to say, oh, I'm gonna distribute the factor four out and then have 12 X plus 28 X plus 20. And it's gonna equal to 40 X minus 20. Right, plus 20, right, plus 20. I think that's a typo, plus 20, all right. Okay, um, another way, you can combine like terms first. Combine like terms. So four times three X plus seven X plus five could be four times 10 X plus five. And then that's, then you can multiply, then you can use the distributed property and say, oh, that's 40 X plus 20. Okay. So these are different ways. It depends on um, which, which order you wanna go first for the multi-step equations, but you should still get the same answer. All right, let's look at the next page. How can you use the distributed property to solve multi-step equations? Example one, use the distributed property to solve a multi-step equation. A math teacher, oh, is that Miss King, recorded the distances he rode his bike last week. He challenged, oh, I guess not, his class to find the number of miles he rode on Thursday, okay? Um, how far did he ride on Thursday? Okay, so Thursday is represented as X. And then he wrote that Monday through Wednesday, um, he had four X plus three. And then Friday, he, uh, um, he rode X plus seven, Saturday X plus three. Seven. So if you add all of them, the total number of miles he wrote um, could be written as another expression. Okay, but but he's giving another information that the total number of miles he wrote on Monday through Wednesday is the same as the total number of miles he wrote on Thursday through Saturday. So you can set them equal to each other. 4x plus 3 is equal to x plus x plus 7 plus x plus 7. Okay. And then you can solve for x. Okay. So 4x plus 3 is equal to x plus x plus 7 plus plus x plus 7. Or you can write that as 2 times x plus 7 and then distribute a property. Um, but that's 2x, wait, 3x, and then plus 14. And then you can subtract 3x on both sides to get x, and uh, subtract 3 on both sides is equal to 11. So 11 miles was the challenge. And you can check your answer by substituting 11 on both all, all the uh, so expressions, and that's 11. 11 plus 7 is 18. 11 plus 7 is also 18. 11 times 4 is 44, plus 7 is 47. So if you add 11 plus 18 plus 18, that should be 47. Okay, let's look at try a question. So if you can solve the equation 3 times x minus 5 minus 5x equals negative 25 plus 6x on by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, 
So first up, you can use distributive property on the left side and get 3x plus 3 times negative 5 minus 5x is equal to negative 25 plus 6x. And you combine like terms or you simplify the, the 3 times negative 5 and get 3x minus 15 over here. And you come finally, you um, combine like terms, negative 5x and 3x going to be negative 2x minus 15 is equal to negative 25 plus 6x. And then what do you do? You add 2x on both sides. If you add 2x on both sides, that's gone. You just have negative 15. That's equal to negative 25 plus 8x. And then you have plus 25 on both sides. That means you have 10 here is equal to 8x. So dividing 10 by 8, you get 10 over 8 or 5 over 4 if you simplify. Good. So can you add x to negative 5 on the left side of the equation as the first step? Can you add x to negative 5x? Can you add x to negative 5x? No, not directly. Why? There's a parenthesis. You have to follow the order, right? No. The x within the parentheses will actually be 3x after a distributive property. So the order of operations is very important. All right, let's look at example two. Distribute a negative coefficient to solve equations. So in part A, you can use distributed property. And if you have a negative coefficient, remember that you have to uh, stick, you have to have the negative with you. So negative five times X and negative five times negative two. Uh, would be uh, your dis uh, after your distributed property is applied. You have negative x, 5x plus 10 is equal to negative 25, and then you solve it out normally, and you should get x is equal to 7. About part b, what if you just have negative and the parentheses x minus 3? That is still a negative sign which means this whole thing is a negative number, you have to distribute that negative as well because that's negative one. If there's no number, if there's no coefficient, but it's still negative, that's still a negative. You can't ignore the negative. So that negative sign means you have negative one times X minus three. So that means you have uh, three plus negative one times X. So that's negative X plus negative one times negative three. So that's plus three is equal to 25, okay? And then you, you can also add X in both sides and you get 25 plus X is equal to three plus three, that's six. And then you can subtract 25 on both sides and get negative 19. If you don't wanna divide by negative one, but later if you have negative X, remember you need to divide it by negative one on both sides. And your final answer is actually negative 19, not positive 19. Okay, so careful with the negative coefficients. Example three, use the distributed property on both sides of an equation. So what if you have parentheses on both sides? That's okay, you just use the same rule on both sides. So use the distributed property on both sides it's going to be a little bit more messy because you have fractions, but that's okay. Um, that's 1 over 4x plus 3 over 4. And that's 1 over 2x plus 2 over 2, which is 1. Okay. And then you can uh, subtract 1 over 2x on both sides. And 1 fourth minus 1 over 2 is going to be negative 1 fourth. So negative x over 4 plus 3 over 4 is equal to 1. Subtract 3 over 4 on both sides. And you get negative 1 over 4x is equal to 1 over 4. Okay. Uh, it looks like x is on the new, on the new uh, denominator. But 
Okay, so these are the same thing. You, you multiply x, right? And then um, you multiply the reciprocal, negative four on both sides, and you get negative one. Okay, so be careful with the negatives. So let's try the, the last try it over here and see if you can do it by yourself. And come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, so you're gonna use the distributive property on both sides. Be careful with the negative coefficient, okay? Negative three times negative seven plus negative three times negative x is equal to one over two x plus one over two times two. Okay, and you have negative times negative, so that's positive 21 plus negative three times negative x, so that's positive three x is equal to, okay, I'm gonna put arrow instead of equal sign, um, is equal to one over two x, two over two is one plus one, okay? And now we're gonna subtract one over two x on both sides. And we have 21, um, plus two and a half, 2.5 x is equal to one. And then we're gonna subtract 21 on both sides and get 2.5 x is equal to one minus 21. And that's gonna be negative 20. So x is equal to negative 20 over 2.5 or um, two and one half is equal to five over two. So, so the reciprocal is negative 20 times two over five, if that's easier, okay? And so X is equal to negative eight is the correct answer. All right, let's summarize our lesson. So in this lesson, we talked about multi-step equations. When solving multi-step equations, sometimes you distribute first and then combine like terms and be careful with the negatives, okay? But sometimes you combine like terms first and then distribute, so it depends. That was lesson uh, 7-3, solving multi-step equations. If you have any more questions, please ask Ms. King in class. Otherwise, we'll continue with the next video and the next lesson. 7-4 is about equations with no solutions or infinitely many solutions. So special cases, right? I'll see you in the next video. Bye.